Uh, Divine, uh, it seems like uh, you have ripples taking <laughs> taking the side of uh, the obedient family TV and we're having sort of glitches. What do you think about all these glitches that is happening? Notifications coming on and then you're seeing ripples that is not obedient family TV. What, what is what, what is happening? Well, basically, my point is they should leave us alone, and with all their ripples, they should, you know, basically leave us to just do our thing because I don't understand why we're having ripples take over the um, platform. But that's besides the point. Welcome to today's show. Yes, uh, welcome to today's show. My name is Mr. Kano, and we are coming up with the highlights of today's show. The highlights, as it were, His Excellency Peter B is in the U.S. speaking at the Harvard African Development Conference. That is happening between today and tomorrow in Paraguay, uh, USA. People at home here are busy with their drinking water and bashing on P.O. They don't know that P.O. has already migrated. He has gone outside of this also to do a, an appreciation tour of the United States, thanking the, uh, all obedience in diaspora for what they did uh, for all of us in 2023 uh, general election. And then we have other things that are coming on, like the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road that is says to cost about 14 point something trillion. We want to bring you what David Omaye had to say and all the lies that goes in uh, over at that very project, 15.6 trillion. That's what uh, they said. Then we also have what is coming up on River State, as um, as we know that Governor Simfubara has set up a committee to recover all the state properties falsely grabbed by the former governor, which is Wike, now sitting in FCT. And we are asking the FCT residents to shine their eyes. It don't begin, they said. We have a whole lot of other things that we want to talk, especially how the bandits that are kidnapping people are celebrating at the future festival in open place with a lot of bikes that we don't know where it's coming from. However, somebody so says he knows where that bike is coming from. I'm not the only one to have all these discussions. I have the as you know, in this studio. Oh, you've seen me earlier. Thank you for joining us on today's broadcast. We're so glad to have you. Yes. So as we started earlier, um, Divine, we wouldn't want um, ripples to actually do whatever magic or whatever is happening right now right. because we see that uh, we wanted to go um, live earlier and we noticed that some sort of glitch. We reached out to um, the, the platform YouTube and they said that uh, it uh, it's might be a minor glitch. So hopefully, let's hope that this is just the glitch. It's right. not a laughing matter because obedience are actually waiting for us on each day to come out and give them what is happening around Nigeria. Right. So let's start with this very uh, issue of PO in the US. Talking over here, you know, there's a lot of blue heart going around Nigeria about his tour of um, all the northern states, uh, the water that he has provided. For instead of people applauding him for actually doing the good work with his own personal money, they now start talking about him. But good thing is he has already migrated to talk more of Africa in far away USA. You understand? Right. And also the people in diaspora use that opportunity to have a discussion with him in different towns in the US. Well, um, His Excellency Peter B is a very, very marketable politician, right? And so we know him by his antecedents. And that is why he's been invited to events like this to actually speak on sustainable growth and development, especially in the African sphere. And so it's going to be happening between today and tomorrow. So if you're trying to listen, there is a ticket you can actually join and then pay attention to him and what he says. But like you rightly said, he's also going to be using this opportunity to take care of and greet and appreciate the Nigerians in diaspora for their um, what they were, they were instrumental to um, the, his victory at the 2023 presidential election. How, not minding the fact that we know what happened and INEC did their own glitch, right, and installed their own person. But the truth of the matter is that Nigerians in the diaspora played a very vital role in these last elections and it is necessary that he is actually appreciating them. Yes, and um, again, it is at this very point, you know why it keeps me uh, kind of happy at this very moment? Because 
uh, um, just like as you mentioned earlier in the show, how um, Omi, or is it uh, Sowore, yes. uh, uh, was talking some trash, you know, about uh, PO. But at the same time, we have seen the repercussion because nobody who comes after PO, whom we have seen to an extent his hand being clean, goes scot free. Right. Uh, it's not PO that instigated his uh, party, the AAC party, to actually come and um, open up the embezzlement uh, and uh, other things he did. But all those things are just coming out now. But what I have noticed as a pattern is that anybody who comes to hit back on PO who is doing good comes back with a backlash, a very serious one. Not necessarily from the obedience but from the people around him. Because this one is mainly not the people of Labour Party or the obedience now. The, in the case of Sowore, it is his own people, his own chieftain, the people that has been projecting him for president, saying now that he is not worthy to be a class teacher. No talk less of being a president. Do you understand? So, I am very much appreciative of uh, you bringing that thing up earlier in the day and uh, we advise our viewers if you didn't see divine's video earlier in the day go to this same uh, uh back on in the earlier video of today and you see how divine actually um exposed some of those things that were actually discussed by this uh party then um while we are this i will also want to um appreciate our people in diaspora for all the good works and support that they have been giving, not just the obedient movement to the obedient family TV and all the people who are registering their um, cooperative societies across the local governments in Nigeria. All the support that you people are doing, are giving, and the encouragement that comes with it is really something that we appreciate. So as you can see, the Obedient Family Team, uh, Obedient Family Cooperative Society is being registered across all the local governments. What you are seeing on the screen is having a date of today being the 12th and today is the day that this very particular Yala LGA multipurpose cooperative society was registered as you can see the date. So it keeps coming and it keeps coming. All obedience are building their structures in their local government to the world, to the state level, and then to the national. This is happening right now. Obedient Family Multipurpose Cooperative Society is happening. Even Ogoja is also on, I think, as of today, from Cross River State Ministry of Social Welfare and Community Development. We have them also registered coming on today. We have several of these uh, local government that we can keep up with, uh, with all their registrations. But why I decided today to also boarding this up is for us to see that this is, keeps happening on each day. And to Today is the final day of the week. It's Friday. By Monday, I guess we are going to see more and more and more local governments creating their structure. Obedient family movement. Obedience. The the talk, the much talked about structure is finally here. There is no going back to it. So why uh, PO is in the US? You, our guys that is in diaspora, can also uh, uh, discuss with PO on moving forward about this. So we appreciate you, we thank you, and we hope you will, of course, accommodate PO and uh, give him a, a, a conducive environment to have discussions on moving Nigeria forward. So uh, that is where we are going to stick for this. But more on this will come tomorrow as PO will be speaking to some of the diasporans, I think, in uh, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Basically in New Jersey where he'll be talking to them and it is an event that is going to be hosted. Some people are going to host it live or broadcast it live. But the point is that he's going to be speaking to them. So if you happen to be in New Jersey and you want to be a part of it, just um play the banners later or you can check earlier in the video where we displayed them. So you get the details of everything that's going to be going down. If you're in New Jersey, just come out and listen to His Excellency P2B talk on moving Nigeria forward and moving African continent forward. Yes, yeah, so uh, we should be displaying the, um, the places that uh, PO, His Excellency, will be going for this appreciation visit right after uh, the, um, 
uh, this very uh, Harvard African Development Conference that he will attend to. So he's going to go around cities and talk. So please do uh, stay up to date on this. So let's move back to other things that is happening, Divine. Um, a breaking news had it that Bobrisky uh, got six months jail term without uh, with option of bail, without an option of fine, so to yes. speak. Now, is it that uh, his lawyer or they all deceived him into pleading guilty to that? Because if he had not pleaded guilty to this, there is bottom line is going to be he's going to get bail, and the bottom line against is that the trial is going to go on for on and on and on. After all, he always boasts that he has money, or should I say, she he has uh, he or she has money. So why wouldn't he have taken that option of going to trial instead of outright plea? Now Nigeria has happened. To him not that um he's fine not that, that you understand but the point is this nigeria happens to people who does not pay attention to details on what happens in nigeria so if you don't pay attention to what is happening in nigeria it will happen to you now that man as I today happens to be a convict right um we've seen what happened to him and like you rightly said we don't know who advised him to plead guilty because what did he do spray naira because the truth of the matter is they even scrapped one of the charges one of the charges against him was money laundering and so they scrapped it and he now pleaded guilty to the um mon naira mutilation and my problem is it happens every other day right we've seen videos even from politicians themselves doing the same naira mutilation they are accusing him of so i see no reason why he pleaded guilty it was a very bad legal advice for them to have him plead guilty but i'm assuming that he felt like because he pleaded with the court so i was thinking maybe he just decided to play the um route of you know what i'm just going to plead guilty and then ask for mercy but from the looks of it the judge is not trying to just you know let it slide he's saying he's going to be reprimanded for like six months without the option of bill and it's just very sad to see but my point is just the fact that but is really not the problem of nigeria actually that is my um humble opinion because i understand that maybe what he does or what he the image he sells is against our cultural ethics and tradition but it is beyond what is the problem of nigeria we have a lot plaguing us right now we shouldn't be bothered about somebody on instagram you know cross-dressing and all of that the people that should be in jail are not in jail but risky is on the lowest scale of people that should be um you know arrested or tried we have politicians who have looted money we have bandits we saw a video of them recently that they were coming out with their um you know motorcycles they were very free actually coming out to celebrate eid and do all of that with their guns and nobody batted an eyelid and so we have someone else somewhere being sentenced to six months these are the people that should actually be sentenced to jail if anything so yeah talking about this video of bandits in zambara state celebrating uh uh defeated now um notwithstanding i i see a lot of bikes in this place and these bikes actually doesn't fly from the sky to mm -hmm. fall into the forest or into the uh, uh, bushes where these bandits are as we can see i'm very much aware that the law enforcement of by now should know the geographical uh, places where these people are staying as they as they are and also these very particular bikes i think fisayo soyombo who also tweeted about this said don't ask me how bandits have access to so many motorcycles i already told you weeks back yes what he was talking about has to deal with the custom smuggling mm -hmm. bringing in all of this in arms ammunitions and all of this and actually supplying these same bandits so in other words the nigerian customs are adding they are adding these bandits right. by doing this unlawful thing and it seems like all this why that we keep talking about it nothing is actually happening right for six weeks, actually, um, Fisa Ashoyimbo on Twitter X was actually waking up. He did a Good Morning Customs tweet, like a series where he will always wake up and tag customs. He writes Good Morning, tag their official handle and ask them questions, give them um, news about what is the smuggling going on in the country. And he went on for six consecutive weeks straight up. He never let down. And it's just very interesting that they've turned silence to it. So we know 
for a fact that there's something they are hiding because if someone woke up every day for six weeks and continued tagging me to something as you know heinous as these crimes of smuggling that are being leveled against them i would have said something but instead of the nigerian customs to say something we've seen them plan different cyber attacks invite the uh, member of the board of trustees of their um, foundation for investigative journalism that's the company fisaya showing what works for they're just doing everything but telling us the truth and it's just very disgusting Yes. Well, uh, still on the bandits, we know that our Channel TV presenter who covers the River State Government House was kidnapped on Thursday night. And these kidnappers are demanding 30 million naira in ransom. 30 million. This just keeps happening and happening. And the people who are aiding these kidnappers, who are providing the arms, are really left out. Keeps happening in the north. Now it has gone through uh, the south again. And of course, we see what is happening in um, River State. But, uh, Divine, coming back to River State, the issue of um, uh, Fubara and uh, uh, Wiki. Earlier in the day, I see uh, different comments coming out from there that um, finally that Wiki's wings has been cut off and Fubara has finally uh, taken over. As we see that uh, in one of the functions that he went to, that uh, Peter Odile actually said things that made that possible, calling River um, State Leader, calling him the River State Leader. Let's take a listen to that while we come back. River State Governor Sim Fubara arrived in Ndoni, the hometown of one of his predecessors, Peter Odini. The governor has come to commission a primary health care center built by Dr. Odini and donated by the Palmo Educational Foundation to the River State Government. Our leader, this is the best thing you have done. It is the best because you are doing it when you are not in office. The ones I'm doing now, take note, it's not my own, it's public fund, not I, it's public fund. This one we are commissioning today is I. I'm even surprised that he, he didn't use the word I. So I dash you the word, take him I. The event, however, assumed a political dimension with Dr. Odili, who has until now refrained from discussing the politics of River State, breaking his silence. Dr. Odili insists that Governor Sim Fubara is a political leader of River State. You are the political leader of River State. <laughs> Reverse people say, where you go, we will go with you. Where you stand, we will stand with you. He wants the young governor to remain firm and also align himself with the positive policies of the government at the center. Our people say I should tell you to stand firm with the president, align with his positive policies, and carry reverse people to the engine room of government in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Governor Sim Fubara says he will continue to stand on the path of righteousness and defend the interests of the state. The governor has a word for detractors who have labeled him as clueless. If targeting critical projects, like this road that we are just awarded, that they've started, Elele, uh, Ebeda, Omok Road, if they say it's being clueless, we agree with them. But we will not go and do roads to our farm. We will not go and do roads. Because we want to please somebody politically, no. We will do those things that our people, everyone, will benefit from. Yeah. If that one means being clueless. If I change my name to Mr. Clueless. Governor Fubara, who was surprised to see the chairman of Ogba Egbema and Doni local government area, Vincent Job at the event, says history will judge all those chairmen that have chosen to denigrate his office. Every one of you who think you are disrespecting me, you already dug your pit. You will fall inside it. Sim Fubara says he will continue to govern with the fear of God and make Rivers people proud with his good works. PK versus Fubara feud continue to uh, develop on each day. Is there no ending point? But we see using this uh, uh, Salah celebration, the Muslim leaders in River State ask Wiki and Sim Fubara to shit sword. They, told them uh, uh, that uh, they know that they are more of political gladiators, but at the same time that they should shed their sword because it is more of the river state people. Let's take a listen to what uh, the leaders of the Muslim community have to say about this. 
worried by the lingering political instability rocking the state for over seven months with no visible solution in sight, despite the peace accord brokered by President Ahmed Tinubu. Muslim leaders have used the occasion of this year's Eid celebration to call on the political gladiators not to throw the state into political turmoil. Speaking on the current political differences between the former governor of the state, Nisungwike, and his political godson, Governor Sin Fubara, the Muslim leaders called on the warring factions to allow peace reign. The current beating of war drums is selfish and uh, political. It has no place. It is not people-oriented. All these uh, drums is not meant to help the people. It's for selfish ends. And because it is for selfish ends, we as a council, as Muslims, we condemn it. There's no reason why River State should be poor. There's no reason why River State should be poor. There's no peace in this state. Communities are divided. You know, uh, either you are from Wike or you are from the governor. So, and we are begging Wike to allow the governor to rule the state. And uh, let me commend the commissioner of police for his timely intervention by appealing to them to make sure that they maintain peace in this state. We are all stakeholders in uh, Project Rivers. Uh, you know, we've been long here, like myself, it's uh, NYC that brought me to this state. I got married in the, from, from this area. And my children, they even know more about uh, this state than me. So in a way, they are equally they a citizen. They are from this state. The Muslim Omar also used the occasion to express their gratitude to Governor Sim Fubara for his contributions towards the Muslim community. Sim, sincerely, has shown so much love for the Ummah. Right from his inception as a governor, he donated palliatives to the Ummah, less privileged, to support them. A cleaner that is using brood to sweep in the office, be able to take 100,000 naira for Christmas. Added to rice. Even we, the Muslims, they give us rice for Xmas. They appealed to the political leaders to call their supporters to order and allow peace to reign. For the time of sober reflection, as we can see, uh, the Muslim leaders in River State are calling for Governor Fubara and uh, the ex while uh, Governor uh, Wiki to shed their swords and uh, make peace uh, with each other as um, they operate uh, over River State crisis. Well, moving ahead uh, with all of this, let's even look at some things that are uh, happening across. I see this trending news every, um, like, every minute it keeps popping up on my site about um, the reduction of uh, price uh, flight tickets from Nigeria to UK since the advent of AP's entrance into, that, into, nice. the, um, into the route. But what that reminds me is, what happened in the year uh, between 19, uh, 1999 and 2000 when MTN and Econet were actually charging uh, for a SIM card for 20, uh, 30,000 Naira and then they came down to 20,000 Naira then. And the uh, later time when Glona came up, we all saw what happened and it becomes going for free. Now, what do you think is happening right now that there is there's no major change. We know that. Let me just go uh, straight to this very issue at hand. Um, why you follow me on this? It's about the Lagos London flight fair war that is going on around everywhere. It concerns the people who are flying out of Nigeria. Yes, but there's concerns in Nigerian quarters about the local flights too. Who is going to make the local flights to come low? Let the person start that very thing. Let's see how it goes. Because now. I will give you that, uh, yeah, the flight fare for Lagos London economy tickets. Egypt here has gone down to 585,620 naira. Apis is now 816,130 uh, naira. We have British Air that is going for uh, 981,000. Virgin Atlantic, 1.1 million. Royal Morocco, 569,000. Rwandan A, 679. Now, let's even leave all of this because we know Ethiopian, Turkish, they are all within the range of 800 and 700 as an now, but Air France 
and KLM remains at one point something million. But there's something I want us to note, which is that as at as of July last year, a one-way economy ticket from Lagos to London will cost you about two point something million at a conversion rate of at least nine hundred and seven naira per dollar at the time. Now, in the first week of April this year, which we know is just barely like two weeks ago, not even ten days ago, a one-way ticket will cost between one million plus despite the exchange rate being at 1250 per dollar one way the emphasis is on one way now how come all of a sudden fs have gone down what could be responsible for that number one there is a new entrant to a major route lagos to london route and that is a piece that a piece made a great difference a very significant difference. There are two major destinations that Nigerians fly, we know. Number one is the Dubai. Dubai has been out of it for a while now due to visa restrictions and other things. So we Nigerians have resorted to the London route. The UK route is where a lot of foreign carriers use earmark to earmark their airfares. Now that APs has come into the space with a direct flight that will not cost any Layover in any other country, the price has dropped. What seems to be the reason? Why? What happened? Is there a magic around that we should be able to question what made the prices drop? The price will drop as long as we have another form of supply that is different from the conventional ones. The supply we now have is a piece, which is a direct flight. We will put pressure on every other route. Of course, it's going to put. Now, what this what this reminds me of what just happened within the last uh, ten days? APs crashing the prices of international airfare. Then that thing struck me. What would have happened if His Excellency P2B has gone there? You know, some people do ask, what would P2B do different if he had been given that mandate? In Nigeria what we see right now is what we are going to experience something that people never knew is going to be possible recall two years ago these flights will be going for two point something million naira but now within 10 days it crashed it's not magic it's not magic and that's why we say his excellency p2b would have done a very serious, not just what just happened here, but magic. Yes, he will. Because when a new person who has a separate ideology and who knows how to manage things in order comes in, a lot of change will happen. So, um, I, I know uh, uh, this, I've taken a, a passionate side of it because of uh, the PO, this thing. But um, I think um, your opinion, as, uh, as I know, is also... Uh, the fact that uh, PO would have done just exactly what happened to this very um, airfare stuff war that is going on now. Oh yeah, you're very right. Um, the law would have been different if um, PO has been allowed to sit on that seat. But the idea, or rather the line I wanted to, is the fact that right now there's a problem. A lot of these prices, tickets prices has dropped, right? But I, I don't think we're talking about the fact that majority of those prices are being put so that they can put airpiece out of business. Because now they've dropped their flight prices to be lower than what Airpiece is even offering. I'm telling, and this, these are people who used to do 2.7 million, right, for even premium economy. I'm telling you right now, the point, the whole point is that they're trying to get the new competitor out of the way totally. And when there is competition, treat. when there is competition in a market, it is the people who are mm -hmm. actually in that economy <laughs> that survive, it benefits them. So, uh, if no matter the price war that is happening now, it is the public that is, is benefiting at this very point in time. Where, yes, running uh, APs out of business, they might not really do. Because you know what? There are people who will be encouraged by the stance that uh, APs took and decide to go with APs. I think i beg to differ because knowing the nigerian populace we're always very loyal to our pockets right because if we 
picture we were traveling right now and you saw a ticket from Virgin Atlantic for let's say 400,000 and Epis is going for 600,000. Now we understand the reason why Virgin Atlantic is making theirs unbearably cheap. We know what they used to charge before. How many Nigerians are we going to say, or just being as humans, are going to say, okay, you know what, I'm patriotic enough to add an extra 200 and something thousand to fly airplanes? The point is that, yes, it is the public that is benefiting from all of this, but these aircraft have a longevity that they've gathered all the money from all the millions they were charging all over the years. Airplanes is at the risk of being run out of business, and if they are run out of business, it is detrimental to our gross domestic products because now the revenue that would have been they would have been generating for the country just off the fact that they are flying these routes will go to other countries. So I'm just saying yes, it is a good it is a good thing that we have competition, right? Because monopoly in business is not a very good thing. But at the same time, we also have to see the other part of the picture because these people are actually out to actually push these people out of the market. Well, okay, uh, I think for the benefit of uh, the people who are out there, uh, who are flying to UK, uh, please do indulge and patronize APs, uh, like uh, Divine has said, they want to kick them out of the market, but we know they are the ones that actually open the eyes of um, all Nigerians who are travelers that they are being ripped off. So we give them a benefit of doubt and uh, actually move with uh, the said, um, is it not a national career, but at least the Nigerian career to uh, travel. Now, away from this, uh, let me put out a reminder. The reminder I want to put out our uh, obedience for, for well-meaning Nigerians is that this remains the obedient family TV. Uh, the, is it the repo or whatever the name is that is being uh, called or what you will see on this very broadcast, they say it's a glitch and we are believing it is so. So we are still here broadcasting as Obedient Family TV. Whatever name that they said is a glitch, let's hope that by tomorrow or next that they will fix, that YouTube will fix this. So this is not coming from another channel. Just keep your subscription steady and also like and share for other Obedience uh, to know what uh, is happening. We are still strictly Obedient Family TV. And uh, finally, as we are about to uh, close up on the studio now, I will also want to remind you again that the obedient movement structure from the grassroots is happening right now if you go to the comment section or the description of this very video there should be a link to join the community whatsapp platform registrations is happening is coming in the form of the obedient family cooperative society these registrations are all over the whole places so please and we also support uh, those of course as much as we are supported to reach out to all the um, the cooperatives who may not have the necessary uh, financial registration uh, fees to deal with now uh, and again we also want to encourage all uh, obedient and well-meaning Nigeria in their respective local government to find out who is the their OB, cooperative society um, president, vice treasurer, and all of that along uh, their local government to join force. All support groups are in uh, are enjoyed. They are requested to join whichever local government they are resident on. Go and join these epoch-making events. We, the obedient movements, are setting up this structure that is going to be solid, which we are going to uh, leverage on as a structural framework for the obedient movement moving forward. Until tomorrow, when we come your way again. Bye for now. <laughs>